Wow, it can be conflicting, confusing, frustrating, joyful. It can be so many things, this beekeeping thing we do, but we just keep on doing it. Well, hey y'all, welcome to Southeast Louisiana. It's always a mix of emotions on bees. What do you do? What have you done? Get my smoker going here. It's finally gotten down to 90. Had to let it get down a little bit after work. I know they don't come out and work bees after working all day in the heat. If I have a slow day, then sure. But uh, I need to get in them. I, I mean, I was on vacation in Minnesota, as you might have known from a previous video. And I went on and got all that space that I could possibly muster, as much space as I could possibly muster, put it on the colonies, situated the best I could, and I left. <laughs> That's a hobbyist for you. Anyway, I left. And I have not been back in them since I got home about four days ago. So I go out there and there the, the hives are covered in bees. I mean, bearding like crazy. Not sure how the flow went when I left. The tallow was very, very dry. And all I'm gonna do today is go see what's flowing. I, I bound, I've bound to had, well, I know I've had a swarm, a swarm at a minimum, but probably a few swarms. Um, because I just didn't have enough supers. Y'all saw that in the other video. That's my my bad, but you know, I'm, I'm not prepared at this point to just house tons and tons of super. I will up it by probably 15 or 20, but I don't want 100, 150 supers. I mean, if I can't get by with another 15 or 20, which would put me up around 80, 85, if I can't get by with that as a hobbyist, I, I need to back down some. And a lot of this has got to do with the years past I've been short but I've always extracted and put them back in but this year and last year I did do Queens differently I didn't do walkway splits anymore so I started using cells and we've got like double the production colonies so that's one thing so I need to go out and see who's overcrowded so when you see beers beers beating when you see bees bearding such as that uh, you know Justin brought up a good comment or posted a good comment on the last video that when he sees it he thinks swarm cells immediately you know he knows they're making swarm cells in his mind let me tell you what I found in my experience, and I agree with Justin, that's, that's true during a flow. When there's a flow going on, what I have seen is just that. When they're bearding that heavily and there's a heavy flow, there's, there's, you, you better get some space on them in my opinion. That's my opinion. Because remember, what is this video? A how I do video, not a how to. I'm not telling you how to manage your colonies during a flow, after a flow, before a flow, or in the winter. I'm showing you what I do and what experiences I have seen in my yard here in southeast louisiana um and what i've seen with that bearding is he's exactly right man they're gonna they're gonna probably swarm on you and i've seen a swarm when i was cutting the grass got it home and there was that swarm up in the tree sure enough and I knew it was gonna happen wasn't sweating it too much but there's also another component to this too sometimes you see them bearding and if there's not a flow i don't sweat it because here is what i have done since day one year one of beekeeping in july august i pull everything down to double supers period i don't care how many how packed they are i don't care if it's stacked eight high i pull all supers go to doubles that's what i do i, I don't I, I don't even question it anymore and uh they beard but there's no flow so those are bees that don't have room those are those they don't normally swarm at that point there's no nectar coming in the queen slows back on her lane and bees are beginning to die off and it it stabilizes it it that's what i've always done every year now we're on a tail end of the flow and i'm seeing all that bearding got me sweating a little bit because I'm sure there's I know there's some that are going to swarm and need space there's also what I saw the other day there's also this part of it I was out there at noon one o'clock and saw no major bearding at all on any of the colonies there may be one or two there were some heavier bees around the entrance but they were all flying that's another deal that I think about okay if they're flying they're not bearding in the afternoon but they are bearding at three, four o'clock, which is what's normal around here. What I see is because they're done foraging. They're usually just going out for water at that point anyway. So that's usually not a sign for swarming or necessarily putting more space on in my little yard here. So that's kind of what I look at. So that's why I say it's frustrating, it's confusing sometimes. Sometimes I wonder, am I doing it right? Is the flow really still going on? You know, I don't know. So when the honey flow is going on, I see a ton of bearding. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get space on them, of which I cannot do now because I don't have space. So what we'll do today is move some honey from colonies that I suspect have swarmed, just like we did last year, 
If it's all capped, I can harvest it in a few days. But if not, what I'll do is I'll get it off of them, put it on a colony that is starving for, for space. Even though it's capped honey or even nectar, at least I'm giving them somewhere for the half space. And, uh, uh, and that way I'll protect the honey from the beetles, from the, the colonies. They haven't been swarmed long enough at this point, hopefully, that they'll have a beetle infestation. But before that happens, we get the honey off and save it. Um, anything I can't extract, I'll mark it for extraction. Uh, but pretty much need to put it on colonies that need space. And once the flow has started, if it's just moderate bearding for me, I don't sweat it. I, I really don't. I just don't sweat it. Look, I am sweating it though. Look how I'm sweating. It's so humid. <laughs> but yeah, I do sweat it, I guess. But I don't sweat it. I leave them alone. I leave them alone until I pull supers in July. So we're going to go see, being that I've got conflicting reports of what's really happening, just got to check and see what's going on in these colonies to see if they're packing honey away or not. And, uh, go from there so let's get out here I've talked enough but I wanted to explain to you what my rationale is so when you see these colonies you don't go wow Mike you gotta add space right now well you'll kind of know why now because I've laid out the foundation so guys here you go prime example it's five in the afternoon that's normal hives packed but that's normal there's one two three four supers on it I'll, I'll leave it I won't add space that one it was packed with bees it's not packed with bees. There's no bearding whatsoever. That one, I would bet they swarmed. Although they were a colony that was growing. But they had, they were packed with bees where they needed a second super. So it could be that the space is just doing what it needs to do for them. Maybe well. I'm going to uh, check it and see. And if there's a ton of bees, I'll leave it alone. If there's not, at least one super's coming off and going somewhere. What I'll probably do... Is this double deep was a hive that was growing this colony was just getting moving good and I put that deep on just to give them space they needed some space gave them some drawn comb they're just probably hot it, it is hot down here so guys they do that it possibly use some space the biggest one is the one that's bearding the most I put them a full deep on there that's just bearding for me I mean I don't I don't sweat that at this time because I know the tallow is wrapping up the secondary blooms they're they're out but i've never known them to really produce a ton that i can tell i don't know i'm just saying what i think um that i've seen and that one i put that on just to kind of guarantee because that was a good queen i didn't want her to leave so i gotta make sure they've got a lot of bees so that's what i'm checking today is you see is that one good still got enough bees if anything this one could use something and i've got another colony next door that i'm pretty sure swarmed and then there's one or two in the other set of stands that we can move supers to some of these colonies that need space. And what it'll do is allow them to finish off the honey and guard it rather than let beetles get it if they did swarm. And in these summer swarms when they're packed, you got a bad habit of throwing a cast, which is a secondary, with a virgin. And they really deplete the numbers on the bees. And then you got this tall hive stacked up with a colony that's just depleted and the beetles just go to town. So let's look through some colonies. I'm not going to take you through them all. Don't want to do them all today. Gonna to finish up some tomorrow. And then we gotta go in town. Let's do, let's look at these over here. So not a lot going on in this one. I'm curious. I'm also curious to see just what's coming in. Okay, so this one never did put anything in this top deep. I mean this top. I put this on right before I left. With some foundation. And apparently. They didn't touch it. Yeah, they just started drawing this out and then quit. So, I'm not going to leave it in there. Now look, this one was a colony that had swarmed early on in the season. And they were building back up and I put that on there for safe measure. But they may have never used it. Looks like everything is about capped. So, what we're going to do is give them their frame of honey back that I had seeded. And put this super somewhere else. At least give somebody some space. They weren't swarm ready. They did build this out and fill it. So it may not fit in here. So I'm gonna do some swapping, but uh, they weren't swarm ready when I left when I put this on here, so I don't think they did. I think they're just still small. There's a lot of bees in that bottom. So this this box, what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave it alone. This thin frame in here, that'll fit. Not perfectly, but it'll fit this frame in here all right got the frames to fit somewhat better 
let's let's pop the super and look and see what kind of number of bees we got they weren't ready to swarm when i left it's only been two weeks and uh i mean not saying they couldn't swarm they obviously could have swarmed but they really didn't even get up in there and i knew they were kind of not super super full but obviously they either swarmed or they didn't have enough bees to really draw anything out so let's look oh my gosh that's heavy Let's see if we have any remnants of swarm cells. It's not a super heavy D. I don't see any remnants. No remnants of cells. There's some old cups and stuff. <laughs> ah, we're here. Let's look. Ah, they're still brooding up, guys. Still brooding up. Very little backfield nectar right here. Very little backfield nectar. And larvae. Yeah, we still got a queen. They didn't do. They didn't need a super to begin with. Should have never give it to them. Wasted it. Could have put it on a colony that probably swarmed. Yeah. They're backfilling it a little bit, but I mean that's not plugging a nest yet. Yeah, they're starting to backfill it, but the flow should be over. So what I'll do is this will set up this box for. Uh, winter and there's full frames of brood and there's eggs in here so they didn't swarm they were just too small so there you go uh, just weren't ready for a super when I put it on before I left for vacation thought they were but obviously they weren't so I pulled that super it's just foundation it's too late for them to really start drawing anything out but that's all right I'll put it somewhere so at least they have some space to get in there and ventilate and maybe regulate um, but yeah, not, not much. I might put it on that colony right there just because they got a lot of bees and it's a double D that exploded on me while I was gone. Didn't expect it to do that. And uh, I'll put it there. But there you go. They didn't swarm. They just didn't need it. It was a waste of a super. So somebody that did swarm could have used that. But oh well. Happens that way. You do the best you can. Stick with your plan. You move on. Let's look at this one. And I want to look at that deep over there and see if they filled that. That'll give me an idea of what kind of flow we had. And then I may go look at a few out there, and then I'm getting out of the heat. Fan, I hate disrupting them like this. They're pretty gentle. You can tell there's some kind of flow going on. So this top box is completely full of honey. It'll be treated like a single management type deal. Because I'll pull it because too much in the top just isn't what I want. I'll feed this. this the bottom one let's see if there's brood up here first and foremost there was when i left or did it no actually you know what i just added this that's all i did with this yep completely drawn out full of nectar i think i got a basically a super this honey will be capped mid-june i mean mid-july and it'll be all uh extracted this whole box will be extracted so there's a whole deep full um, definitely strong enough bees. I'll put a super just to give them space. I think I got a couple more that are swarmed that I can do this with. So they did good. Let me throw that super on here. Okay, guys, this is not to make honey with. This is basically to give them some room. This was an old rotten super I put on here because I didn't have any more or deep. And they drew it out so it paid off. But this is just to give them room so they can regulate their temperature a little better. That's all that's about. And to keep them from swarming, I guess. But again, we're coming toward the end of the flow. I don't think there's going to be a big problem with that. So there we go. We've got them a little more space. This is a super I might can use. I put this deep on here just as a precaution when I was leaving. They don't look like they've done anything in it. So we've got a little bit of foundation here. Let's pull this out and see what they've done in here. Not much or nothing. So that's it. We'll shake these out and take this from them. Let's look for some cells. I bet this is full of honey. Oh gosh. Oh, there's, look at the bees and the drones. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, emerged swarm cells. They swarmed. So this one swarmed. There's some emerged swarm cells. Uh, did they throw a cast? Who knows? But there's a bunch of emerged cells. 
but they don't need the third box. So we're gonna get rid of that. Oh, gotta be careful. Not gonna mess with them. Since they still have emerged cells, we gotta give her some time. All right, let's close them up. So their population will dwindle, so we don't need another box on. As the queen is gone now, I mean, not laying, she's got that brood break. We're talking, you know, four weeks for her total from the time they made the cells. 16 days, we know that. 16 days plus a week to mature. Then you've got to have uh, her on a mating flight. So there's at least 28 days before you get a egg in there. It's another 21 before you get any workers out. So their population will dwindle with nectar coming in, but it won't be replaced. So the population will come way down. So I gotta pull space off of that. Or it will be a beetle house. We don't want beetle houses. No beetle houses. We'll just give this one some space just because it is full of bees I bet this thing is loaded this was a super of deep super y'all see the beetles it's when they start coming back so again I'm not putting this box on here for them to draw it out and fill it I'm putting it on here to maintain a little bit of space to regulate their temperature since it's hot oh yeah so we're waiting on capped honey just check and see if she did get up in here and give us some brood up in here or not nope she didn't oh my goodness look at that is that beautiful this is the culmination of all that work so we don't want to ruin it by letting them go out of here on a swarm flight so what we we'll do is give them this other box just to hold them just to give them space again not trying to make honey out of that box and I might can use this somewhere else. I might end up coming over here with a, a medium, but we'll see. Let's see what else we've got and what we can rob from as far as supers. So maybe they can keep the hive a little bit cooler now. So basically I wasted two deeps. <laughs> or two supers, one medium, one deep, before I left. I was in a hurry, wanted to get on vacation. Other colonies could have used the space. But they didn't have it, so it doesn't matter at this point. You just move on, you move on. This colony here, I did not put anything on because I'm going to pull this. They were already filling this and going to backfill the brood already. By the time the flow came, they were so small, so I just left them how they are, and I'm going to harvest this. So I have two that I use as basically single hive management, single box management stuff, um, because they fill the tops. And that one, of course, we got to see if they make a queen. And not the best time to make a queen, so I have to keep an eye on that one. Gonna keep an eye on the one over there on the left and make sure they don't try and swarm the head eggs are laying they weren't but they weren't huge in population so they were starting to plug up the nest but there was like four frames full of brood cat brood and some with larvae so it's newer brood so it's got a little time before it emerges so if the flow gets over we'll be okay and we gave them some space and uh that's it for over here i'm gonna leave them alone got one next to the honey house i do want to check and uh, see, they they acted like they had swarmed before I left, but they still got plenty of bees. Look like they're going, but they're not bearding at all in this heat. And that's usually a telltale sign that their population's down. They got two supers on there, and I want to make sure they've got enough population to guard those. See, this one doesn't have the amount of bees it had. Now it is shaded; it's not as warm, but it wasn't an exploding colony at all. It wasn't, but it did have more than that. It seemed like to me it did. Let me go look and see if it swarmed. They were putting honey in. But, uh, oh, they filled this thing up. So it don't look like a ton of bees. That's a 10 frame. This is a 10 frame, that's a nine frame. Yeah, I think this bee, these bees swarmed. There's not a bunch in here, but it's enough to maintain. So let's flip it up real quick. That's always a good thing to do, just to see if there's any old cells. I think this one, if it swarmed though, it swarmed early after I left. They had tried to swarm it one other time. Oh gosh, it's full. Yeah, they swarm, I guarantee you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so these bees swarmed. But you can see the merged cell right there. That one I might have torn. No, that's submerged. Let's see what that one is. Yeah, these, there's a couple open ones. There's one that's not open. So we're going to put this back together. It is honey bound. So we're going to uh leave them alone if they'll requeen gosh almighty yeah 
I'd say. The telltale sign when you pick up the deep that's a brood box and it's a darn heavy. Might have to extract some from the middle of this one. See how close we are to extracting because which comes shove, we just extract it all and that'll keep the beetles away. They don't need them. So looking inside, seeing a lot of frames like this down beside there. These smaller colonies won't dry it and cap it that well. So probably pull one of these supers off for sure. It'll go to a colony that just needs a little space to hang out. That's what we'll do. Gosh, these things are heavy. Oh my goodness. Get too old for this. Whew. So a couple of them have swarmed. I knew they probably would. Just didn't have enough supers on them. I'm kind of surprised this one did though, but hey, the tallow must have really hit. When the tallow hits, it is such a violent flow when it does hit right. So apparently it worked out and they did hit it. Um, talking to a friend at work, he took half a deep and a super off, extracted them, put them back on, and two weeks later they were full again with the tallow. So that's how it works. Gotta have enough supers for them. Um, probably two or three more out there that swarmed I'm sure uh, the rest are all full like those other ones still a little tallow coming in apparently gonna be interesting this year <laughs> always something oh well the swarm colonies their populations are gonna dwindle before they come back the other two colonies they just haven't gotten there yet and we looked at this one I'll at least pull one super off because remember they're going to dwindle they will dwindle down and the top box is full of honey on this one. So they definitely plug their nest. Just gotta watch the ones that swarmed and see if they requeen and what we'll do at the end of the season. Uh, just combine them. Cause they're not sickly colonies, they're just needing somewhere to go. So. Did you see these bees? It's hot and it's normally like this down here. It's just hot down here. That one, I suspect it was already had swarmed. And that one there. So we'll be moving supers. And I'll give this double. Now this double did surprise me. This one I did not expect to be this strong. The one right here. And this one, I didn't care about it. I was so frustrated with it. Everybody was asking me what I made off of that harvest where I was making space before I went on vacation. I pulled about 20, 25 gallons off of that. Which by the pound, that's 300 pounds. So, got about 300 pounds so far uh, in order to make space for them. And I feel like that super right there after working all day in the heat weighed about 300 pounds. If it was only that easy to pull one super and get 300, huh. Some people say they do. I think there might be a little exaggeration in that. <laughs> this one, I'm not sure if it swarmed or not. It hadn't got a lot of activity, but it wasn't the strongest at the same time. And I gave it more space, so maybe they made use of it and they're up in there. I don't know, because I, I put this box on here. Um, I don't know have to go in them this this one looks like it's warm which is a shame it shouldn't have but other than that I think everybody's looking normal uh oh but what is that one 12 ooh 12 should look better than that 12 should look better than that oh that isn't 12 that's 13 never mind that's right okay no it's good 14 looks normal this one here I pulled two supers off and extracted and put them back on they're probably full up already. Wow. I guess the tallow did come in. Uh, worked with an excluder on this one, so they probably swarmed. Because <laughs> I don't have any, any good success with excluders. Wow. Here's an idea of what I'm talking about. See the, the highs now? During peak flying hours. This is during working hours, I call it. Notice how they're not near as bearded. Sure, they're crowded. There's a couple of them that are. Of course, I gave them space. But nothing... Nothing at all like they were. Uh, that one over there, second from the right back there. Um, that one is still bearding a little bit. I actually put a box on that yesterday. It's a foundation, so they got more space. But uh, you see, it's a total difference during working hours. Um, so what that tells me is these bees are bearding in the evenings because all the workers are back and they're done flying. Not saying that there's none building swarm cells. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying it's it's normally okay about this time. We're usually gonna be okay because the flow is wrapping up. So that that I use that to also kind of go, you know, into my 
uh, preparation and management of, all right, what are they doing? You can't just go on one sign and say, this is what's happening all the time. You got to see what are they doing? What is going on? What's happening in, with the flow? What's happening with the temperatures? And it's right now, it's 96 out here. So that's what I was saying when they're out working and they're not bearding, then we're usually in okay shape. When it's evening and they're bearding, they're all just back and there's they're staying outside regulating temperature it's not always about swarming although if we were in the middle of the flow yes absolutely i'd be like uh-oh we're in trouble wow that was a small colony so they're, they're that's normal for them ah look at that one one day but so i know i'm gonna look at uh definitely look at 21 i'm concerned with it I don't see a lot of bees on the entrances. So this one, which I do think it swarmed, what I'll probably do is just let those two finish out the supers for them. They can definitely use them. All right, guys, it's the next day and I'm gonna do this closing. I was whipped uh, working all day in that heat and getting out there. Well, <clears throat> and I know a lot of folks gonna be saying, man, you're in trouble. I could be in trouble. Um, you know, bearding like that during the flow is trouble. Um, that means they're full, they're full, they're full. And, you know, I didn't solve any major problems by uh, moving boxes because I really didn't give them space. Some of them I gave them space, but a lot of it was like foundation and stuff or whatever. From colonies, I kind of wasted a box on. I wish I'd have, you know, had more time before vacation to kind of evaluate a little harder who I could have fixed those with, but I didn't. So anyway, all I really did was move honey to be finished, finished capping, because remember, if you don't have numbers, the, the swarmed colonies are going to dwindle from here on out. They're going to dwindle. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts because it's going to be six, eight weeks before we see eggs and cat brood and all that good stuff. And before they emerge, it's going to be at least eight weeks. You know, it's a long time. So you need, just like you need for pollen collection, honey collection, or nectar collection, on it, you need numbers. You also need numbers to finish it and cure it and cap it. Uh, so I didn't by the big basically what I did was I took any colonies that were just bearding heavily heavily almost all of them that were bearding heavily and I gave them at least a box or two and a lot of that was the finished curing so maybe that'll keep them busy on the same note when you go out there like now if I went out there at 10 o'clock in the morning most of the fronts aren't like that so that means what you're seeing a lot of times in, in my cases what I've seen is that they're worker bees uh, they're the workers hanging out. Uh, Mr. Julian used to always say they're like the truck drivers parked in the truck stop for the rest for the night. You know, uh, they're not trucking anymore. They're they're basically hanging out, cooling off, helping regulate the temperature. And there are some foragers out getting water, a lot of them. So you know, it's not always a sure sign during a flow that that's swarm swarming going on, but in a lot of cases it is. As the flow ends and I see that, I don't worry about that at all. They'll be like that, especially when I reduce them to two boxes, they'll be piled on the front. They're not going anywhere normally because it's it's done. And there's nothing coming in, the queen is slowing down and the numbers are beginning to stabilize as field bees die off. You know, it's it's uh, one of those deals where this year just panned out the way it did. I couldn't yank all the supers off and get them spun out and put them back on for a, a tallow flow. It just didn't work out that way. Um, there's a lot of honey out there, I can tell you that now. I'm playing that balance game you play with bees. They do this to you every time. It's like they're just trying to torment me. I'm not sweating it though, you know, it's, we just work with it and do what we gotta do. The biggest thing I wanna do is make sure I get uncapped stuff onto larger colonies and prevent those bees that have swarmed from being overrun with beetles, giving them every chance to requeen. If they don't requeen, I still have nukes that weren't ready for sale, so I still have resource highs. I have four of them. And so there's four laying queens right there. So if there's any problems, I'm gonna fix them before the, before the fall. Anything else that's uh, needing combined or whatever before the fall, we can do that. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be it. I appreciate y'all watching. Hey, it's always an adventure in beekeeping. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope the bees are doing well. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.